stuff's going down. <laughs> we have, that's a terrible description of a book. And I finally figured out the Ready or Not movie connection that I didn't know anything about because I live under a rock. And then I obviously just saw her name and I was like, I'll just buy two. Yep, things happen. Um, I did not pay attention to the fact that it was large print. <laughs> so my eyes will probably thank me for it. And that's it, that's the cart. Proven it to you because I can lift it. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to an extension of a What's on My Bookshelf video with a What's on My Book Cart video. We'll get some better, better shots happening. So when I did my holiday gift guide suggestions for bookish people, I talked about how a book cart is a great thing to buy for somebody. And one of my lovely subscribers, you guys, gave me a soft call out. It was like, um, excuse me, miss, what are some of those books? I don't think we have seen those before. What is going on in your cart? And I was like, yep, you're right. Got, yep, mm -hmm, yep, called me out totally. I don't know if there's anything particularly new on here that I haven't shown you guys before, but maybe, who knows? <laughs> Not a thousand percent sure what's on here. So I had done my bookshelf tour video and I was always gonna show you what was on my book carts. I have two of them. There's one over there and then the one that I just showed you. And then of course there's like books and boxes and books in other places and it's just, it's a lot of stuff, but you're not wrong. I did promise I was gonna show you what's on my cart. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do this cart. I am not gonna go into grave detail on every single book because we would be here for like a thousand hours and then some. And I feel like nobody's down for that. So I've already talked enough. Let's talk about what's on the cart. So I feel like there's no not awkward way to do this. So we're just gonna fumble through. Of course, there's a book resting on top because of course there is. So this is Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. I actually started to read this last year. I was on page 81 and I went through a bit of a spell last year where I could not get into books and I was DNFing them. So this is a soft DNF. I plan to come back to this one. I'm gonna have to go back to the beginning, which is totally fine, but this is sort of like real life plus fiction. So it's Richard Chismar's real life where he was in the summer of 1988, but then he includes a murder in his town and it blends like real life and fiction. I've just, I've heard great things about it. I'm going back to it. So anyway, I'm not gonna give descriptions on every single book. Sadie by Courtney Summers. I read this book, I totally loved it. I wound up doing it on audio because the audio is amazing. This has a podcast in it. By far one of the best audiobooks I have ever read and the best podcast depiction in a book. Really, really well done and also a great story. Malice by Kigo Higashino. So I bought this one ever ago and I haven't read it yet. So this one is a best-selling novelist is found brutally murdered in a locked room within his locked house. Yes, please. A book that I picked up the end of last year that I haven't read yet, My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. If I was a true seasonal reader who could stick to a TBR, I would have read this over the holiday, like the Halloween spooky season holiday, but I'm not, so I haven't. There's a sequel of this like coming out, but it's like all the slasher vibes, so I need to have it. Also in that category, this is by Clay McLeod, Clay McLeod Chapman. This is Whisper Down the Lane. Riley Sager recommended this book when he was doing his interview at the Poison Pen Bookshop this summer, promoting a house, the house across the lake. So I picked it up. I also picked up another book by this author, The Reawakening, The Awakening. If I was organized, The Remaking, <laughs> which was a book that came out in 2019. Also has horror movie vibes to it. Oh guys, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a video. The Girls in the Garden by Lisa Jewell. I revisited original Lisa Jewell Ralph's party earlier this year and I absolutely loved it and I became re-obsessed with her pre kind of thrillery books. So I picked up The Girls in the Garden. I haven't read it yet and I'm just gonna leave it there. I have The Disappearing Act by Katherine Stedman. So I haven't read this yet. I have her new book, The Family Game, which I think I'm gonna read on the soon side. So Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library just read it and loved it. It has a, I think it takes place over the Christmas holiday. So again, not a seasonal reader, but I'm oddly feeling the need to seasonally read that book. And also Lindsay said it was great. And I finally figured out the Ready or Not movie connection that I didn't know anything about because 
I live under a rock. So anyway, this is an earlier book of hers and it says, a British actress discovers the dark side of Hollywood when she's the only witness to the sudden disappearance of a woman she meets at an audition. Works for me. I'm also realizing I'm gonna have to re stack this book or thing cart, which is gonna be annoying. <laughs> so. Last Seen Alive by Joanna Schaffenhausen. This is the fifth book in the Ellery Hathaway series. And I am not ready for book number five yet, but when I'm ready, I'm excited to have it and I will be reading it. And then I have Unmasked by Paul Holes. So this is his memoir about solving cold cases, including the Golden State Killer. And I have listened to him on many a podcast. Very fascinating, I'm very excited when I get to it. We Have Always Lived in a Castle by Shirley Jackson. This was another one I was gonna read during spooky season and I didn't. So this is not a long book. I feel like anytime I say, oh, I'll pick up something short, it always takes me longer to read it. Don't ask. House of Spines by Michael J. Malone. I feel like I've talked about this one. A uh, deliciously dark tale about the things that haunt us. Unexpected and beautiful, all the gothic elements of classics like Rebecca. So, done. The Tenth Justice by Brad Meltzer. This is a book that I got a thousand years ago when I was in a book club, like one of those like in the mail book club situations. And I loved it. So this book came out in 1997. And I have another one of his, which might not be on this cart. This was his first book. So this was like my heyday of Grisham. Absolutely loved it. Legal thriller. I want to reread it. I refuse to get rid of it. And then I have two books by Katherine Cooper. So I picked these up, I don't know if it was end of last year, or beginning of this year. I picked them up in the winter. I think it was earlier this year when I was reading Shiver and One by One and The Sanatorium, like all the isolated wintry vibes. Keep shaking the books at you guys. So The Chateau is A Couple on the Brink, A Body on the Lawn, Welcome to the Chateau. And then the chalet is four guests, one luxury getaway and one perfect murder. So this is the one that is all the isolated vibes. And then I obviously just saw her name and I was like, I'll just buy two. Yep, things happen, life happens. Next up, we have Meg Gardner's The Dark Corners of the Night. So I finally read book number one in the un of <laughs> So I finally read book number one in the Unsub series earlier this year. I already had book number two and then I picked up book three. So this is a book that I thrifted and did not pay enough attention when I was thrifting. I just saw it was hardcover. Um, I did not pay attention to the fact that it was large print. <laughs> so my eyes will probably thank me for it. And then I have Best Friends Forever by Jennifer Weiner. I read this a kajillion years ago and I just don't want to get rid of her books because I really loved them at the time and I'm a fan of hers. I have not read any of her more recent stuff but I really enjoyed this book. And this one has a bit of a mystery element to it. So yay for that. So this is Bad Luck Bridesmaid by Alison Rose Greenberg. So I picked this up after the book two besties retreat in August when everyone was talking about like amazing books and recommendations. So Amber from Beaches and Books recommended this one and it sounded really intriguing. So I picked it up, I'll be reading it. And then I have Meet Me in Another Life by, by Katrina Sylvie. So this was another book that I had heard about on a podcast and I wanna say PJ Vernon is the one who talked about it and I got really excited about it and I haven't read it yet, but um, I will. <laughs> I'm always gonna read it. I'm always gonna read it. But you guys have seen that one before. Another one you've seen before is The Divines by Ellie Eaton. So I talked about this in my Dark Academia TBR that I basically read nothing off of. So that happened. Next up is Perfect Fifth by Megan McCafferty. So this is the fifth book in her Jessica Darling series. I read those a long time ago and I actually got this one at a library book sale 2018, 2019. It was pre-Panorama and I haven't read it yet and I really wanna go back to the beginning and read them. I really enjoy her writing, I haven't read a book by her in forever, but I know they re-released these covers as well. And I like seeing them again. So I feel like they're having a second coming. So good for her. Next up is another Joanna Schaffenhausen. So this is Every Waking Hour. I wanna say this is book four in the LRE series. So I need to read book three, which might pop up on this cart. We'll see. I have Dark Things I Adore by Katie Latari. I picked this up last fall. Could, like totally because the cover 
looked like this. So this was also in my Dark Academia video that I talked about. So this is 1988 and 2018. Dual POVs, we get a murder we get a mystery we get i think some revenge so that one sounds good and then i have the girls are also nice here by laurie elizabeth flynn i read this at the end of last year and i absolutely loved it one of my favorite books of last year just the perfect depiction of dark and messed up female friendships mysteries in the past mysteries in the present dual timelines school reunion all the dark academia love it and then one of my faves which i've talked about so many times good girls guide to murder if you haven't read it yet what are you doing? <laughs> then I have Lisa Gardner's When You See Me. I haven't read a Lisa Gardner book in forever. And in this one we have female remains are discovered in the hills of Georgia and FBI agent Kimberly Quincy recruits Sergeant D.D. Warren who is like the main series character for Lisa Gardner um, and survivor turned Avenger Flora Dane to join her federal task force. So it says perfect town, perfect crime, perfect nightmare. I haven't read, like I said, a Lisa Gardner book in a really long time, but I have heard, and I feel like this is one of those like series standalone situations where you don't have to start at the beginning of DD's story, you can jump in here. And then I believe Flora Dane is a carryover character from a previous book as well. And I've heard great things about that book. I'm going to see if I can figure out which title it is. I'm probably not going to be that good, but I think it might be Look For Me. I'll correct myself down below, but I really like her. I really, really like her. And then this monstrosity, this is The Crow Girl by Eric Axel Sund. So this is 110% an Abby from Crime by the Book inspired me, made me do it. I haven't read it yet. So Abby has said repeatedly that this is like her favorite book. This book is so physically heavy. Like I'm actually having a hard time holding it. <laughs> really heavy i thrifted this again i think maybe end of last year i got it how many pages 766 768 pages it's a lot of book i think it's really dark and messed up begins in a stockholm city also i believe this is three books combined into one in the u.s edition so that's also why it's giant so i think that's a three book series in one book here and then the last book on this shelf is Love People Use Things because the opposite never works. So this is from The Minimalists, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. I started to read this. I did not finish it, but I have listened to multiple podcasts of theirs. I follow them on Instagram and it's all about exactly what it says. Love people use things. So it's a minimalist lifestyle, the benefits of it, and I believe their journey of getting there. Okay couple sticking off the back here. So I have The Liar's Girl by Katherine Ryan Howard. This is one that was gifted to me. I haven't read it yet and I'm so sorry because I'm a horrible human. This came from Jeannie for my birthday last year. So I'm a big Katherine Ryan Howard fan. This one has serial killer vibes in it also, which I love. Alice in Wonderland, I did read this book. And then Friend Request by Laura Marshall. This is a book that I keep debating on hauling, but then like, I just, I can't, I can't seem to let it go. So this one says, Maria Weston wants to be friends with me. Maybe that had been the problem all along. She had wanted to be friends, but I let her down. She's been hovering at the edge of my consciousness for all of my adult life. Although I've been good at keeping her out, just a blurred shadow in the corner of my eye, almost, but not quite out of sight. Maria Weston wants to be friends but Maria Weston has been dead for more than 25 years. So I'm pretty sure our main character gets like a Facebook request from this woman and she's dead. So let me know if anyone's read that book because I do have a hard time. I tried to get into it. I couldn't get into it. This was part of my like DNF of 2021 situation, 2020. Last year was 2020. Oh man. <laughs> ah, no, it was 2021. <laughs> This is part of the DNF of 2021. Everything's fine. We're all fine here. Book number three in the Joanna Schaffenhausen Ellery Hathaway series. This is the one I need to read next. I'm going to put it over here so it's more, more in my line of sight. Then I have The Cutting Room by Ashley Dyer. So I believe this is book two in a series. I have Splinter in the Blood somewhere. I don't even know when I got these books, 
So this is, yep, Detective Ruth Lake and Greg Carver were introduced in the electrifying Slinter in the Blood, and we've got a serial killer. Got a serial killer on our hands. Does anybody else buy multiple books in a series before they read the first one? This came out in 2019, so I've had some blackout moments here. It's okay. It's okay. All right, we have The Night Sister by Jennifer McMahon. I know I need to read it. The Winter People is actually legitimately up next on my list, so that has nothing to do with anything. And then we have The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. Haven't read it yet, but I did lend it to my mom and she read it and loved it. I have Persons Unknown by Susie Steiner. So she wrote Missing Presumed. This is another book. It's part of a series, I think. This is another book I've had for ages. And I don't want to get rid of it. No Mercy, another Joanna Schaffenhausen. This is book number two in the series, which I read and loved. Clearly, this is like her cart. All her books are here. The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena. I read this when it first came out. Absolutely loved it. And then Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. Their debut novel. Also loved this one. Read it when it first came out. I'm actually interested in rereading this. I've been craving a reread of this book because I've talked about it a few times and I haven't, haven't read it yet. Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. So this is a book that I know got tons of great press this year. I've heard tons of great reviews about it. So I'm excited to give it a read. I almost dropped a book. And then I have Atomic Habits by James Clear. I did read this all in its shimmery glory and I probably have applied next to no tips and tricks, next to none of the tips and tricks from this book. So that happened. Book number two in the Unsub series, Into the Black Nowhere by Meg Gardner. This one's up next for me in the series, obviously. And I believe this one has all the Ted Bundy vibes. So the first one was like loosely uh, Zodiac Killer. And I believe this is Ted Bundy. I don't know why I'm putting it over here, but I am. And then we have Cackle by Rachel Harrison. I loved this book. I read this last year. This was one of those books that took me by complete surprise. And I dog-eared it to so many different pieces. I completely related to the main character in this. I cried. I loved this book. It was spectacular. Turned me into a major Rachel Harrison fan. And then we have Ace of Spades, which I softly DNF'd earlier this year because I had the audiobook and I was having a hard time getting into it. I think I was just too hyper distracted at the time, which happens. So I'm going to physically read it. And then I have The Retreat by Sarah Pierce, which is the second book in her sanatorium series. So it's Detective Ellen Warner. And in this one, we've got another body. She's looking into it because that's what she does. Okay, next shelf. We have, it's coming for me. We have Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. This was an arc that I got last year and I read it and I really enjoyed it. 70s vibes, coming of age story, just really, really well done. And then I have Before She Was Found by Heather Gutenkoff. So I haven't read this yet. I had thrifted this, so I'm sure I showed it in a thrifted haul. It's got the covers all bent, which annoys me to no end. But this one was recommended by you guys as one I would love. So it's three young girlfriends, a dark obsession, and a chilling crime that shakes up a quiet Iowa town. So I want to say this was after, it's kind of like the Slender Man case. And I read the Carter Wilson book, Mr. Tender's Girl. And this was recommended as something very similar to that. So I also just saw the Slender Man is on HBO Max, which I have... I took advantage of one of those deals that they had cooking. So I'm excited to see that show because it's supposed to be really good and creepy. Uh, Great Gatsby. I have two editions of this book. <laughs> I think I'm going to unhaul this one because Amanda from the Curly Reader bought me this beautiful one up here. So I've got Gatsby. I have Eeny Meeny by MJ Arledge. This is also part of a series. This is book number one. I have it on Good Authority. Abby from Crime by the Book, that the series gets better as it goes on. So I don't think the first book is the best in the series, but it like gives you the groundwork you need. So this is another detective inspector and I love a series. Book number three in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is Good as Dead. I loved this one as well. This book was probably a smidge longer than it needed to be. There's a lot going on in here, but it is a very satisfying conclusion to that series and I love what she did with this in terms of how what happens in book number one impacts characters throughout 
and it's just so well done it's just so well done and then i have silence of the lambs by thomas harris which i am going to read i've talked about this i also picked up hannibal or no red dragon look at me doing my work so people have told me that i should read this first and then go into this so i've seen the movie silence of the lambs a couple times now so i know that story i don't know what the differences are between book and movie but i have been told to just like do it right and meet hannibal here before we meet him in silence of the lambs so then we have girls with bright futures by tracy dobmeyer and wendy katzman i haven't read this yet this was one of those books like the beginning of last year i had to have it and i just haven't read it so this is like a college admission scandal and we have three women three daughters and as and a promise that they'll each get what they deserve so we have all of these girls like competing for the same stanford admissions and it says days before applications are due one of the girls suffers a near fatal accident one that doesn't appear to be an accident at all so we get like that community connection it reminds me a little bit of the night she went missing by Kristen bird which has the we sort of have a missing girl on that one but there's three moms that are involved so it's the mother of the missing girl the mother of the boy who's accused of it and then another mother in the friend group and how her missing the girl going missing affects the community affects the mothers affects their relationships so i find that very intriguing we have the cousins by karen mcmanus i read this i really enjoyed it and then we have in her shoes by jennifer weiner which i read a thousand years ago and also really loved this is also a fun movie tony collette they like literally can do no wrong i have the resting place by camilla sten i haven't read this one yet this was the arc of it but i read her first book the lost village and really enjoyed it so i just need to make the time i have endgame by daniel cole this is the third and i believe final book in the ragdoll series so i read the first two books this year and loved them this one says murder comes full circle so i kind of intentionally didn't want to read it after i finished book number two which is ragdoll no ragdoll's number one hangman is number two and i don't know i kind of feel like maybe i'm ready for it so this one says a locked room a dead body a secret that went to the grave mm -hmm. i just really loved wolf from the first book and i thought that the darkness paired with the humor in that book was really well done and i enjoyed book number two but not the same way i felt like something was missing from it and i can't tell you what it is without ruining something so i'm not going to <laughs> i have gretchen by shannon kirk so i have another one of her books in the vines i want to say it's called it's on the other cart because i just saw it before and i haven't read it yet yeah in the vines and don't ask me why i picked this one up so this one says what's so strange don't all girls play games ever since lucy was two she's been on the run alongside her mother she's never understood the reason for a lifetime of paranoia aliases and lies all she understands are the rules never lock eyes with strangers never let down your guard always be ready to move on so it's like 13 after 13 years in 11 states they are hiding away in a place in New Hampshire. They are living with the owner. So he's like renting out a room in the house or rooms in the house. And it says he's a gentlemanly pianist and his lonely daughter, Gretchen. She's Lucy's age and soon becomes Lucy's real first real friend. But Gretchen and her father have secrets of their own. So there's just all sorts of dark and messed up in this, it sounds. So this is what happens when I, I go thrifting online. You just, you never know what you're going to find. Okay. I feel like a lot of these books were thrifted. Oh, I was just talking about this in a video I filmed. The Girl in the Ice by Robert Brinza. So I just picked up Nine Elms, which is like a Kate, Kate Marshall detective series. That's the first in that one. I picked this up the end of last year when I was in like a wintry mood and I haven't read it yet. I'm going to put him over here too. And then Clean by Juno Dawson. This is Gossip Girl Goes to Rehab. I haven't read this yet. This has a super shimmery rose gold cover. I bought this years ago. And I feel like this is one of my first ever book depository orders. And I was just obsessed. Have to read it. We'll get there. We have Dorothy Parker Drank Here by Ellen Meester. So I haven't read this yet, but I will. <laughs> the Secret She Keeps by Michael Robotham. I read this book and definitely enjoyed it. And then I have Killer Deal by Sophie Serenbrandt. This is a Scandinavian crime mystery. This has some real estate vibes to it. I used to work in commercial real estate, so I'm intrigued, even though I think this is residential. A Man Called Uva by Bachman. I read this, enjoyed it. Um, not as much as Beartown, though. 
Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pessel. So she wrote Night Film, which I was obsessed with, and I'm committed to being obsessed with more of her books. We have There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This is a YA mystery. This is another one of those books where I feel like I want to read it. I haven't read it yet, but I don't want to let it go because I'm curious. I don't know. Has anybody read it? Let me know. We have A Deadly Thaw by Sarah Ward. I think I went on such a binge of like cold books last year. So this is 2004 and spring 2016. Stuff's going down. <laughs> we have, that's a terrible description of a book. What Lies Between Us by John Mars, which I have read and I totally love and I'm overdue for another John Mars book. This was deliciously creepy. This was deliciously creepy. Go into this one blind. It's so good. It's so good. And that's it. That's the cart. Proving it to you because I can lift it. So not to speak at a marathon speed, but of course I was and my battery light is flashing. So I'm going to stop this. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know if you've heard of any of these books, if you'd recommend, if you've heard of any of these books, of course you've heard of some of these books. Let me know of the books that I quickly said I haven't read, if you would recommend any of them that I prioritize them, or if you recommend I should unhaul anything in particular that I haven't read yet. Just curious, I'm working on my pango. So we'll see what happens there. But that's the cart. Thank you so much for the video idea. And I will get to the other cart. I'll do that for you guys too. Um, that one actually has books stacked on top of it, like the cart runneth over. There's a situation happening over there. But until another video, I hope everyone's doing great. Thanks for being here. If you made it this far, you guys are awesome. You're absolutely awesome. So I will talk to you guys soon in another video. And until then, bye everybody.